Hello there, everybody. I have today with me the Breville Handy Mix Scraper Hand Mixer. I got this on Amazon. It is a heftier priced mixer, as you can see. Um, it's not a prime item, but it is 240 watts. And there's a couple neat technologies. I did an unboxing of this, um, but the video got lost. So I'm going to try and just kind of use the Google Home to give us as much information as possible. So it has Beater IQ technology. Um, I didn't want to take the box out here too, just because there's not enough counter space. But basically what that means is inside your storage bin here, and mind you, I have not used this yet, um, you have more than just your standard beaters. It does come with two whisk attachments and it comes with two dough hook attachments. It is a little cumbersome to undo. I'm gonna try my best here. To, there we go. Set it off to the side. So you do get two balloon whisks and you do get two dough hooks. So basically what, depending on what dough hook or attachment you put in this um, hand mixer, it's going to automatically adjust the speed and the power that it delivers when you're using those um, attachments. So this isn't the first time that a company has introduced like a scraping technology. I honestly feel like either Hamilton Beach or Black & Decker kind of pioneered that. Um, there are nine speeds. It does have a boost. There's a pause button or a pause option. The eject is a trigger style ejector. There's no button to press. So it is kind of nicer because it you aren't going to accidentally hit it. Um, whereas some machines or some mixers have a fingertip design. Um, and then there's even some that don't have an ejector at all. I do really like the storage bin. It just snaps in on the top. It doesn't slide into the back. So um, it is a little bit easier to snap on. Uh, I haven't used the other attachments either. As I said, I haven't used this at all. Um, but there are some complaints. Though it does have really good reviews, if you go to the ratings on this, there are a lot of um, complaints talking about how... Um, basically the material comes off, it's come off into the food. Um, now I did not buy this because I thought that I would never have to scrape anymore. This is actually my first Breville product in general. Um, but apparently I added a hand mixer to my cart. So, um, there's just some people talking about how, um, it has that issue. But of course, those poor reviews are offset by all the positives. This thing has almost 2000 um, reviews online. So my choice to cook or to bake today is just really simple. I'm kind of dieting right now, but um, I'm going to make some brownies, which is easy. You don't even need a mixer to make brownies, but I am using the mixer to do so. Because this is not the first appliance video that I have done for kitchen use, but um, it seems as though some people have some complaints when you do an unboxing video, but you don't actually use the item, which I understand, but it's forewarned in the video that it's not a use video, but we're just going to give this a whirl. I may have to set that off to the side. I'm trying to make it so the the mix doesn't get caught in that flap that I cut. This is Ghirardelli or Ghirardelli, whatever you'd like to call it. Um, triple fudge. And there are, I believe they, see this is exactly what I didn't want to happen. Here we go. Just gotta give it a squeeze. There's chips in the brownies, and I can't tell you how long it's been since I've made brownies. It's hard to do this with one hand, but thankfully, I really haven't missed the bowl. This is just going to have to go in the sink. I have my eggs, and I also have oil and water. Mm, I'm a little nervous that this is not going to be a large enough bowl. Um, however... 
I have turned this on, um, this mixer. I haven't used it. So um, the nice part is you don't have to worry about um, the mixer taking off. Some of the higher-end mixers that I've seen, actually, um, you end up getting yourself into trouble because, like, the Cuisinart mixers, I believe, are just a little too fast. They don't have a slow enough slow speed. I still have the um, little cord keeper here on the hand mixer. Now, one thing I did really like, I do have a KitchenAid 9-speed digital hand mixer, um, which honestly this is a direct competitor to. Breville, from my understanding, is an Australian company. I think I've actually been tightening this uh, the whole time I've been trying to undo it. I may have to set this down. That was not what I wanted to do, but... I don't have a tripod. I've only got two hands. So. We are back. So I've got the hand mixer plugged in. It does have a neat design here. It's kind of got like a loop, which from my understanding, a lot of Breville's products have that. It also has a swivel here on the back of the mixer, so you can kind of kick the the cord from one side to the other, depending on what's easiest. Again, that's not anything new. Um, KitchenAid has that as well. But what I was trying to say about the KitchenAid is um, the KitchenAid is a nine speed. This is almost a direct competitor, but the KitchenAid I have actually has a strap, a silicone strap that doesn't absorb anything. Um, it's pretty durable, and it actually will keep the cord all nice and tidy. You can put the cord inside the storage bin, which is kind of why they leave the back of it open. Um, however, I've got this going in the wrong way. There is a larger side and a smaller side, and there's also picture diagrams there. So this needs to go into the larger side. That's honestly pretty standard with most mixers. Um, but the KitchenAid, I do like the storage, but you've also got to take into consideration KitchenAid hand mixers do not have the um, cool design of the storage bin like this one does. Now, this has to go in one of these ways. I guess it's this way. There. This also has a cool helper light that is the, this is the only mixer that I've seen that has a light on your workspace. It's right underneath the mixer. Um, <clears throat> the turbo beater design is similar to the KitchenAid turbo beaters. Um, they're actually a little bit larger, though. And one thing I did notice, this mixer is much taller in profile than the KitchenAid. Um, so if you're doing something in a cooking vessel like potatoes, mashed potatoes, something like that, you're definitely going to be a bit higher than the KitchenAid. Um, but if you have tall counters or if you're a shorter person, you might feel like a monkey with your arm all the way up in the air. So there is an on-off button up here. There's also a press to boost button. So you actually just physically press the wheel down. It's got a really nice positive feedback um, feel to it. And there is a pause button as well. Sorry, um, I work in healthcare and I have to wear gloves all the time to take care of patients and my nails grow weekly because of wearing gloves. It's a legitimate thing. So you hit the on button and it immediately goes into standby and it also keeps track of how long you've been mixing. And you can see the light on the base there. This is a plenty quick enough speed to be able to handle this job, but of course I'm gonna bump it up a couple. So now we're on speed three. You can see we've been mixing for 13 seconds. And it is an easy task for any hand mixer, brownie mix, and it's really not even something that's necessary that you use a um, hand mixer for brownie mix, but um, 
I wasn't going to go out of my way to make something special like cookies or anything because I am kind of doing a calorie deficit right now. But what I really like about this is it really, it could be the bowl, but I think it's also um, speaks of the mixer's um, beaters as well. It just seems to be pulling in everything. Even if I leave the mixer stationary, there's really nothing at rest in the bowl. All the ingredients are constantly moving in there, which honestly made this really quick and easy. And you can see I hit the pause button and the pause will resume on the same speed. KitchenAid does not do that. When you hit the, um, there's a slider switch left and right on my KitchenAid, you can see the bowl is also still illuminated by the LED light. Um, and you can also adjust your speed while pause. So you can actually take off on a lower speed and you can already set it before the machine's running. I like that. So in comparison to the KitchenAid, the KitchenAid has nine speeds, but it does not have a digital display. The KitchenAid, you have a slider left to right switch. When you turn it from off to on, your um, light bar will illuminate to show you the speeds. From what I remember, um, I think there, are not, there aren't nine individual lights for each speed. Um, it kind of goes up in increments, so it might light up halfway and then fully lit, and then it moves on to the next bar and lights that up halfway and lights it fully as you increase the speeds. Um, so you could honestly be on four and a half bars, but it's not as easy to know exactly what speed you're on because it's not numbered. Um, also, there's no pause function on the... Um, the KitchenAid, and when you turn it off to stop the mixer, it resumes back on speed one. So the Breville here, you can see what speed you're working on or what you left off on before you even take off. You can also adjust the speeds without even turning the mixer on, and the bowl stays illuminated even when you have it paused. So I do really like that. But you'll notice if I turn the mixer back on, the light doesn't turn on until I turn a speed on. Once I hit pause, though, it's kind of neat. The LED light stays illuminated. It's nice and bright. I mean, it's really lighting up the whole countertop here, but it's also um, illuminating just, you can, it's like a headlight, honestly. It did a really great job mixing um, the ingredients. Of course, I still have some stuff that I need to get on the sides, but... I don't want to go too crazy on the edges uh, and end up um, moving the bowl all around because these silicone pieces on here really catch the bowl, just like anything rubber on anything, and it really starts to make the bowl move around. One thing I do want to mention is um, I read comments stating that the Breville's beaters are not, um, you can't buy replacement beaters without the rubber coating on them. Um, personally, if I started to notice they were chipping off, um, I really think it's going to depend on what you're using the mixer for. But if I started to see them coming off, I would just peel it off the rest of the way. It's metal underneath. It's the same exact material. And to me, again, I did not buy this mixer because it had the scraping beaters. I don't really feel like that is a heavily advertised thing with this mixer. You can see the light has not shut off and I believe it will remain on until you totally shut the mixer off, just like that. Um, I wanna show you guys the eject function, but first I do wanna go through the different speeds that the mixer has so you guys can get an idea because sometimes even with a nine speed mixer just because something has a high speed um or a, a large speed range it doesn't mean that the speeds are enough for what you need it for so i'm going to fill this clean bowl up with water and this way when i use the mixer on the different speeds it's not going to make the counter all gross so this also gives you guys a good idea. Turning it on, you can see 
it will you can shut it off with the power wheel or you can pause it and it'll stop as well so going from the off position moving the wheel is not going to do anything you do need to hit the on button as soon as you turn a speed up it will illuminate this is speed two we were mixing on speed three so that will look familiar speed four five six seven eight and nine now, you'll notice it's really whipping that water up in there. And pressing the power boost, it immediately jumps to speed nine, no matter what speed you're using. So if you're on speed one, you press the power boost, it goes right up to nine. Turn it off, and we will eject the beaters. And that my folks, is the Breville Handy Mix.